thank you everyone for coming. Um, I'm really happy to be here today. Um, so today I'll talk about uh, a little bit more about Bokeh. Um, I'm Fabio. Um, I work for Continuum Analytics uh, and I'm core dev of Bokeh library. Um, I'm involved in many things uh, uh, and open source community stuff. I like uh, helping with the open Python world itself. So if you have anything to share or uh, want to talk about later after the talk, I would love to hear stories about your bokeh experience or your code experience, what you're doing. And so come and talk to me. Um, first, some warnings. Um, this talk is actually highly inspired by other bokeh talks. So you may see um, some duplicate content, um, especially um, Brian Van de Ven talk at SciPy this year, uh, Sarah Bird talks this morning, and the one at PyCon, um, Christine Doug tutorial. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm, stealing a, I'm stealing a lot, a lot of material here. Um, mostly because of time issues and because they are great, there is great material and it's worth it to re reuse it. Um, and that's what open source is about, right? So, um, the con uh, well, I'm, I'm also sorry that uh, you don't have the very welcoming and great uh, speaker like Brian or Sarah, so you need to, to have me. Uh, <laughs> Um, this is very inspired by the Bokeh team work, um, the, the um, brainstorming and idea we have. Uh, actually, it turns out that this is very different from the talk I wanted to give when I applied. Um, I try to stick with the main guidelines about visualization, uh, nice visualizations and big data. Uh, but it changed quite a bit from the, the original idea. Um, also because user feedbacks and requests, uh, there, is, there has been a lot of new things on the Bokeh side in the last months, and I wanted to also give some real world um, showcase about uh, these things and, and things that people are asking for that are, are ready, but apparently we, we need to do, a, to do a better job of publishing those things. Um, yeah, and of course, the recent evol evolution of Bokeh itself and what's going to be next. Um, who is this talking for? Uh, first, uh, who here uh, have heard about Bokeh before? Just heard. Okay, cool, cool. Um, who, who here uses Bokeh or have used Bokeh? Okay, okay. That's what I was expecting. Um, so, Actually, the, the, the main idea was to show uh, some, a, a talk for advanced or middle advanced users. Uh, I actually changed it a little bit, so I will try to be, to show nice things that you can do, but also touch real code, show you real code, so people can actually see what's, what we are using. And experienced users can actually have some inspiration. Um, this is probably the most hacky talk, hockey talk ever. So be prepared for demos and probably things not working, especially with the, with the, the Wi-Fi. Um, but let's see what, what, what happens. So what is Bokeh? Um, another question, who here is more, more into the scientific or PyData branch of things, computing? Okay, and who's here is more web geek? Okay, cool. The numbers are changing over time. So um, this is good. Um, what is Bokeh? Bokeh is an interactive visualization library. Um, mm, Python, but not only Python. Um, we'll see more about that later. That lets you do novel and beautiful graphics. Um, very data driven that lets you do dynamic streaming, large data um, crunching um, on the browser. 
and have deep roots in data science, but it's, actually, it's really available for everyone. The thing about roots in data science is that it started with, with some specific problems in mind, but actually touches a, a lot the, the web world, so it's kind of a really interesting balance. And we used to claim a lot about this. You don't need to write JavaScript to, to have your stuff written in the browser. But I want to push back a little bit saying that you may want to, and we'll see about that later. So back to what Bokeh is. Um, Bokeh is, is by design uh, separated in, in few parts that actually lets your Python code talks with your UI, your front end code, uh, or at least generate your stuff. And so, okay, basically, the, the, the path to, to render your uh, plot on the browser, it, it, it's generated by a, a specific Bokeh.js library written in, in JavaScript, CoffeeScript, that basically consumes JSON blobs. Um, so it's quite, it's quite easy to have language bindings because what the, the lower level of each specific language just need to do is uh, implement the, inter the, the JSON interface to communicate to, to, to Bokeh JS. So right now we have the Bokeh Python binding, R, Lua, uh, Julia, we have a Scala binding, um, and I'm pretty sure we have new ones in the next year or so. So also, looking at the language specific side, um, Bokeh is composed by a series of, let's say, modules um, or stacks. One stack is on the, in the, the library interface. We have the models or glyphs um, and the plotting and the charts interfaces. Uh, glyphs are, are models are the lower interface. We have the middle interface plotting that basically builds um, a lot of shortcuts and, and nice patterns to, to help you create your stuff. And you have the new, we have the new charts interface that basically just lets you use canned charts, uh, pre-tribute canned charts to, to build like the main stream, streamline charts like line or time series or bar chart or whatever. Um, right now we can output to different, um, uh, outputs, uh, we, we can output to uh, uh, IPython notebook, a file, or our server. Uh, we have the presentation layer, which we have a lot of modules to, to actually do some ty styling tools, add tools to your plot, layouts, interactions, and embed your plot so far. Um, cool. So what's the difference between those, those actually, those API levels? We have the glyphs in a API level, which is the lower level, and to create, those three shows you how to create a um, line chart. As you can see, the, the glyphs interface is pretty much lower level. You need to create a lot of objects to compose your chart. Um, it's not that it's difficult, but it's, it lets you um, compose really, really custom plots, really uh, novel plots with, with those. So if we have time, I would love to show more. Um, then we have the plotting interface that actually, uh, it just need a few lines to create a, a, a line, a plot. Um, all, you can, all you need just is specify the output you want. Uh, in this case, we want to file, we create a figure, um, which is basically a, a plot object. Uh, we add a line glyph to that um, and in, in right now we just do some styling. Um, this, actually, this line is actually um, extra. We, we, we could avoid it. Um, charts is even more um, shrink. You just need to have your own data set um, of linear data and you, you map those data. You, you just pass your data to a line builder and it builds a new chart for you. Okay. So right now, um, new, new users should ask, can ask, how can I learn more? Uh, first place would be the documentation. 
Uh, as I will say before, uh, later, documentation has been a big effort for us. Um, and I will show a little bit more about what, what's, next, what, what's new. Uh, there's the, the GitHub the repo, um, Twitter, our Twitter account, uh, our YouTube channel that actually shows some, some nice examples. Uh, and I, I think you can learn a lot from talks we give around on conferences. You can see a lot of talks on, on our YouTube channel or on YouTube uh, on conference uh, channels. And of course, you can watch the talks of EuroPython later. So, Prolog. Um, Sitting from Brian's presentation, I want to show a little bit about what happened this year uh, in, in, on Bokeh. Uh, so uh, we had a lot of amazements, uh, adding sophisticated tools towards the plots. Now we have a lasso tool, plot, uh, poly selection tool, point selections. Uh, we have a new improved uh, cross hair inspector and a hover tool inspector. We have finally hover f f uh, ab above lines. So we'll see that on an uh, example later. Um, we have uh, really improved uh, visual design, especially on, on tools, but also on small details. Uh, we have a really improved doc, docs, uh, documentation set, um, as I will show later, uh, showing the interactions. Uh, and actually, we have a reference guide 100 complete and auto generated. So basically, all uh, all the, our, our APIs are documented, and it has live plots that you can inter interact with uh, directly from the documentation. So basically, all glyphs models they have uh, doc strings that have code uh, on, on on comments. The, our doc documentation um, chain uh, grabs grabs that code, executes it, integrates into the um, Sphinx. Uh, chain that is generating the, the object, so we, we actually generate that the, everything. Um, we have a new um, so, uh, callback uh, mechanism to build uh, very sophisticated interactions into static plots, uh, static documents. So actually, documents that you can build with static, uh, with dynamic uh, interactions, and you can just integrate into an email or sent to someone over the chat and they will see everything. I will show that later. Um, so, and actually, uh, I wanted to mention RBOK. Uh, we had new improvements on many language bindings, but I think probably R is the, is the most, uh, the big news, the big new one. You actually can um, integrate R with Bokeh plots. There's, uh, Ryan have been doing a lot of work on this and uh, there's actually a really nice visualizations that you can do. Um, so what can you do with Bokeh today? So first, just to show a little bit of difference between one year ago, uh, the project was in those, with those current numbers, uh, version five, and uh, this, those are the numbers today. The increasing, it, the, it's increasing it, it, with an incredible speed. Um, it's, it, it became a quite popular and, and big project, and a quite actually uh, broad pro uh, project that touches many different uh, technologies. Uh, so many languages, many technologies, and it's it, it's really nice to see that users are using it and it's growing the user base. Uh, this is this is something that is really brought by a, a great team that is is growing a lot. Um, um, I, 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 I don't have time to show and talk about what everybody's doing, but we have added a lot of new people to the, to the team to work on specific problems, so, uh, on having better tools to other, or for styling and better nice looking plots, um, uh, other for specific computation problems. So. It's very exciting to, to work with all the student peoples, people. Um, so the, the thing, one of the main important new things are dynamic interaction, interactions on static, static documents. Uh, with JavaScript callbacks, uh, we have, you have now the capability to create nice, nice interactions uh, with, within 
uh, static plots with just a few lines of JavaScript. So pushing back from what we, we claim, probably writing a few lines of JavaScript is a, is a good thing because you're still in your Python environment. It's just that you're integrating your, your JavaScript code within your Python code. Um, in the future, we want really to encapsulate a lot of those patterns. So we want actually to reduce JavaScript you need to, to do interactions. Um, another very powerful addition is uh, the AJAX data source uh, that opens really new scenarios. The, uh, so in Bokeh, a data source is basically a bag of data that you tell your plot to, to, to use. So for instance, if you have a, a dictionary or a pandas data frame with X and Y, uh, X and Y are linear uh, arrays, uh, it can just pass that to a column data source and it's a bag of data that you can use. Uh, so what happens when you pass that to, to a plot, that data is serialized in the JSON object, it's sent to the JavaScript side, uh, Bokeh JavaScript library, which will consume that and generate a new plot. That data is, is static on, on, your, on your UI side, on your front end side. With, the job, uh, with an AJAX data source, you don't pass any data. You say, um, track, track this specific REST API, ping that with, uh, pull that with a specific frequency, uh, and use fields X and Y from, that, from the data you grab from, from that source. And basically, it will just interact uh, live with a, a completely different uh, service that you don't, it's not, not related to Bokeh itself. I will show some live code later. Um, another nice addition is uh, the Bokeh embed components. Um, so basically now you can have, you can create like one, two, four, 10, 20 plots, and you can basically just call Bokeh components to, to have a mapping between keys and your components. And you can use those keys to embed the plots in your in your page. I will, I will show that later as well. Um, and there's an, a lot of uh, more info now with, uh, with our new user guide that I would quickly show you. Um, that didn't work, okay. Okay, here you go. Um, so this is the new documentation we have. As I said, um, we have live working demos. So those are, those are generated uh, from, from our docs. Um, look, we're going to the interactions. So let's see. Okay, defining actions right now. For, so for instance, this is a static page. And within a static document, you can actually define actions so for instance, here I define a new plot. I say use this source, um, draw this glyph, and use the tab tool to, to open a new URL when I click on a glyph. And it just opens the new. And this is created in a, as a static document in, in our documentation. This is the new concept of callback. So right here you have a line plot, um, a figure, uh, a normal data source, and I, I create a new callback that has some JavaScript code that we'll just take, serialize, send to the JavaScript side, and Bokeh.js will take care of that and add this an, as a new interaction on your plot. So we are saying here, um, add this callback object to uh, Bokeh slider uh, widget, and basically when I move the widget, I will call um, I'm, I'm actually able to pass, um, <laughs> uh, sorry. So here I'm passing the, I'm saying map the source object of the Python side to a source object to in the JavaScript side. So I'm actually passing that Python object and Bokeh knows that on the JavaScript side, this is the, the same source object. And I will use that object from the source, the, the JavaScript side, to get its data to uh, create a new callback for the value and update the values of the line. Um, so here you can see in action, 
when I move the slider, it just changes the, the line. Uh, there's a lot of examples of callbacks. Some are really nice, fancy stuff. Um, you can this here. And, and you can see, like, you can create a fairly um, large amount of complex interactions from the Python side that translates to the JavaScript side. And this is not communicating to any server, it's, it's just on static documents. Okay. Um, cool, so this, this, this is another example of um, uh, static, uh, nice interactions in static documents. Um, this, this is, this is um, this thanks to Sarah uh, Bird for building this. Uh, this is a recreation of a famous TED talk that basically puts together mort mortality and birth rate uh, over time. Um, so I will load the this no, no, notebook viewer. And as you can see, it loads a static notebook, but th what I want to show here is that this is a very nice interaction, very nice example of uh, a cool plot, a novel plot being updated on a static document. And this is, this is being rendered on a uh, Jupyter notebook just because we said output to notebook. If we say output to an HTML file, this is a, a, an HTML file, a self-contained that you can just email to, to anyone or send over chat or whatever. You can see that uh, on, on, on any device supported by Bokeh. Um, cool. The other one is a um, nice spectrogram example that those that already use Bokeh or heard about Bokeh may have seen that in an older version. Um, basically, it's an, um, streaming, an example that shows some streaming um, that uh, collects information from the mic, uh, computes the power spectrum, uh, and, and basically updates the uh, bokeh plot. So let me show you this example live. So the big one of the big there are some uh, a lot of improvements on this example. Uh, one of the main ones actually is the customization of the layout. Before it was just a, a bokeh layout with, uh, oh, here you go. So as you can see, as I update volume and it just tracks my, my voice and shows everything, I can move the sliders to update a little bit. Again, the frequency, um, I can pause it. Um, and this is, everything is running uh, streaming. Um, it's not using bokeh server at all. Um, and this is a very interesting um, demo, basically because it touches a lot of key bokeh uh, features and as the, 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 the library itself evolves, it's nice to get back to that um, and see how we can play with this example. Um, oh no, I wanted to show something. So this is a fairly large example, um, but... Of course, I won't find that. So, uh, here you go. Okay, so I just wanted to show this part of the example. Um, so, we're basically building bokeh widgets. Uh, this builds the widgets we are using for the example. Uh, what I show, I told you before is that right now you can use a mapping to say map this key to this bokeh object, this to gain slider, spec, spec, etc. And when you pass to bokeh components, it returns a script that you can integrate in your template and the divs for each one. So it, divs is just basically a dictionary that have those keys and the values are just the the HTML tags that uh, nodes that you can use to place your objects within the page. Uh, and you, you can do it and use your own templates script with whatever um, web 
thingy you, you want to use in the Python world. Uh, cool. Because we don't have enough web frameworks in Python. Uh, spectrogram, remix, okay. So as I said, you use components, performance enhancements, uh, mostly written in Python. Uh, we replace a lot of JavaScript code here. Uh, this one, is an, I think it's a nice example of um, uh, use of Bokeh in a, in a real world app. This, is, this shows an app in use for our team, uh, X data project team. It's, it's something that I cannot show you code and uh, in, you cannot show you entirely. It's a fairly large project. Uh, but it's a nice example of to show what you can do right now with, with Bokeh. With, um, and putting a lot of play, uh, things together on a dashboard. And this is not using Bokeh Server at all. This is a, a static HTML page. Not so static because it, it communicates with a lot of services, but it uses uh, AJAX data source as well. So as you can see, um, you can interact with the, the, main, the, the plot to, to zoom on some areas. You have some uh, nice hover tools. You can pop windows. You can select and select glyphs. Uh, this is a very um, nice uh, addition that we have. So basically, the, the possibility to those elements on the bottom, the legends, are actually plain HTML objects that you can use to uh, hide or show bokeh objects. So th th there is a really high interactivity between plain vanilla j JavaScript and the bokeh objects that you have here. Um, uh, so that's that. Um, cool. Um, yeah, as I said, this is an a internal project that we are using for um, uh, on a, the XData initiative to detect uh, of, and, and help searching for financial fraud. Uh, and as again, no server uh, is used for that. And another important thing is that. There's no custom code there. Every feature, everything that is there is just using the Bokeh uh, last, uh, most recent release. Uh, I would like to show that demo as well, but I'm, I don't have enough time, I think, so that I would just tell about that. This is a, another um, quite uh, known demo that we had for a long time that basically shows a large data cube of data that should be like five giga data cube of ocean data that is basically being um, downsampled and in sliced through time with a live plot uh, service on, on the web. So it's a very cool uh, um, example. The, the thing that is really cool in this new version is that you don't have to, it's not use Bokeh, using Bokeh server at all. It's just using a, um, a, an AJAX data source and a small Flask script that you can actually see here. This, this is the code that is used on the Flask side to receive the data from Bokeh, downsample the big chunk of data, and then resend back to the, to the plot itself. Okay. This is another example of nice visualizations with, um, with Bokeh. Um, and basically, the previous example downsample was done, the previous example was done by Brian of the Bokeh team and Matt Rocklin, who wrote the, the, the basically uh, downsampling code. It, it used Dask. Uh, Dask is a, um, basically is a task scheduler for distributing arrays and, and tasks on those arrays. Um, and it, it generates some dot files to show the, the current is execution of the tasks. And it, those, th this example shows uh, some bokeh plots uh, rendered using those dot files, uh, which is a pretty cool thing. And those are actually bokeh glyphs. You can add interactivity to those and move them around or color them depending on the situation. Okay, uh, so I've talked a lot. Um, I wanted to show those features put in place. Uh, so right now, the first demo I wanted to show is the stocks demo. And 
Uh, let me check here. This demo is basically showing um, the evolution of a, a bokeh chart um, that sh a plot that shows uh, stock prices data. And usually we showed a lot of those examples with um, stocks data per day. Mm. So let me grab the code here. Okay. So this one shows a simple plot of stocks data over time. This is showing daily prices since 2000 until today. And the code is fairly simple. Uh, here we go. I just say output to a file, uh, create, to f uh, create a figure with where the X is daytime ob um, is a daytime X. Um, draw a line taken from some da this data. This data is basically just a matrix. Uh, uh, an array of date of, of prices, um, array of dates, sorry, array of prices, and it shows the, the line. Nothing really cool about that. Um, the data itself is not so big. So the next example is something that we actually have on our examples folder, and it shows uh, here we go. Okay. Oh, come on. It shows book, uh, no, it's not. Okay. Mm. So it's why it's not showing. I'll skip that for now. But basically, you can see that example on our code base. Um, it shows Bokeh server being used to compute some live data from of comparing two stocks. Um, what is really new right now is this one. Uh, come on. Um, so let me to. Take a look at this here. Right now, I will basically run a Flask server that is used to um, serve AJAX data. Of course, it's not working. Oh, it's already running. Okay. So, let me take this. This one shows the same example with an AJAX data source. Hmm. No, let's stop it. Rerun it. Okay, restart it. Okay, so this is basically the same thing, just using the AJAX data source. The code is fairly simple. Um, okay, here we go, AJAX, here we go. 
So as you can see, it's basically the same code saying use this Ajax data source uh, as a source instead of my pandas array, uh, pandas data frame. Um, so what is really cool about um, Ajax data sources is that you can use them in a fancy way to build um, cool things. So uh, let's call this second example. For this one, um, I'm actually using both two new um, things, the bokeh components to place the, the components here. Uh, so I have one plot on top, another one here. And this is basically the data that is being served for the Flask server. Uh, the Flask server have a, a REST API that I can use to say, give me back a chunk, update this data source. So uh, when I select a region here, I'm telling the, the server to, say, to resample that data for just this interval, and it resamples in real time. As you saw, uh, I don't know if it, you noticed, when I zoom in the, the, the region itself, at first the plot was different, and then it updates. Right now the same thing. The, um, what happens is that I update the ranges on the UI side. I say to the, the REST API, update the range. It resamples everything, downsamples all the source, and resends, resends back. Um, I will show uh, more. Uh, as you can see, I can add some nice tools here, right? like the, the default um, hover tool. But I can do better and build some more custom. Uh, OK, so this one, I have an, an address that I need to use. Uh, God. Why? Ah. Uh. Okay, so I want to use the default. So this one shows a little bit more things. Um, I'm using I'm using the bokeh components to actually place the components on the page. Um, I added a, a plain um, HTML div to handle uh, interactions and a theme com combo. So right now, if I the resampling, you can see the, 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 the data is being resampled in real time. Right now, I set the resample to 15,000 points. So right now, it, have, uh, it has 13 and something points, which is a nice thing about Bokeh because it's using Canvas instead of SVG. Uh, if you try to place as many points on SVG, you see it blows up uh, very quick. Um, on another um, range, if I zoom in quite high, I will downsample to less than uh, hours. So I will see a factor of resampling it that is pretty higher. Right now, on the server side, it, it just downsampled uh, around 60,000 uh, 60, points to uh, 12,000 12, points. And you can see that the data is really detailed here. Um, so I can try and see here. And it has a lot of points. And it, everything is done uh, in real time, just, just using a few lines of code um, that I will show you in a bit. Um, as an, a nice addition to this example, I've added a, a theme. So you can actually theme your plots. Um, so the same visualization is shown uh, on a dark or a light uh, theme. Uh, cool. So this example is, well, it's a bit more complicated than the other, but here it is. Um, and 
basically what's happening is um, I have a lot of code. This code is just style, style, style. Here I create a, a data source that I you use later. This is just um, a, a function that creates the figure for the, the main plot. This is the selection, a uh, smaller plot. And his, here is the code, the JavaScript so code that I, I wrote to say both update the ranges on the main plot, tell the, um, the AJAX service that it's, it needs to update, downsample everything, and send back the results. Um, the only thing, as you can see, the only thing that it's doing on the callback, I, I, I could do most of this with just, without most of this code, well, the thing that I wanted also is to create the, the, that panel on the right, so it, this is done by this part of code. And the other part is just the small Flask example. This is all the code that I'm, uh, for the Flask REST application, which is fairly, it's fairly small. Okay, so I'm kind of running out of time, uh, but I want to show another nice example. Um, which is um, the airports example. Uh, here we go. This, this example is based on um, a site that's called Open Flights and that has an Open Flights repo for open data about all the airports in the world. Um, okay. So here we go, airports. This is the service. Okay, shut this down. Okay. So first I I would show you this is an example with Bokeh server. So no line of JavaScript to view this. Um, uh, Sorry. No, it's not working for some reason. Um, but it's, it's, um, it's not something that I would like to show. I, I really want to show the, the AJAX one, so that's not so bad. Um, okay, I will show you the complete, the full demo. And okay, this one shows basically all the airports in the world and highlights a connection for one airport. The cool thing about this is that basically the, the architecture of this app is that both the app and the bokeh part, the, the service and the bokeh part are on the same Flask service. So I can call a simple, a simple script that uh, just send requests to the, to the service saying update airport. And this translates to the service changing the airports on the app. So as you can see, you can stream your data to your bokeh plots using um, other patterns that, than what we usually show on, on the bokeh server. It's, you can have your own API and it basically updates everything on your UI without you having to write fancy stuff. This is, this is something that is really useful for, for, for instance, we have many people that have sen uh, users that say they have sensors collecting data from somewhere, they want to, they, they push data to their own REST API, they don't know how to integrate their stuff on REST, uh, on, on Bokeh side. This is very simple and really the code is not so big for this um, demo. 
I won't show you the code right now because uh, we are uh, out of time. But <coughs> yeah, we have the break just after. So if you want, I can extend a little bit. Uh, cool. Sorry for being so slow. Um, so what's coming next uh, on Bokeh's side? Uh, just a brief um, small words about it. Uh, some features that we have been asked a lot. First one is um, LaTeX uh, annotations. Uh, this is a really painful feature. Um, we have been looking at this for a long time. There weren't many promising uh, technologies for that um, without huge amount of work. Right now we are very um, positive about uh, something that seems KTEC, uh, that seems pretty pretty uh, popular and, and really nice uh, library. We'll try to integrate that and soon. Um, the other one is static output. So people would like to create uh, static output in images right, right from uh, bokeh plots. Uh, surprisingly, it's very hard problem <coughs> to, to stab, but we, it's on our Main priorities. The, right now, the, the path that looks more promising is from MPL or, or Cairo backends. Let, let's see. Um, new charts and pasting. Uh, the charts interface as, is the, the, the most recent one. Is re evolving. Is not really stable as an API because we 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 learned a lot from from the first. Once there is, uh, I'm starting this uh, this week with Nick Roth to, to work on that um, more heavily. We have done a lot of conversations and we are very excited about the, the new charts. The new validation uh, layer for Bokeh, which is something that we wanted for a long time. So basically, um, one of the problems we had with serialization is that it's easy when you hold a lot of serializations from the front end to the back end, it's easy to put stuff that are not really correctly uh, uh, or is missing from the serialization side. Right now, if you, uh, our validation system, if you forget to do, to add something or you misspell uh, uh, some data spec, we'll warn you. Uh, um, right now, another couple of really cool things are Bokeh app authoring uh, a new, new thing coming out. I, I want to show a video, but I, I don't have time. Uh, but I, I really invite you guys to, to watch Brian uh, Van de Ven talk at SciPy. It shows that uh, stuff. New R, Scala, and uh, um, JS uh, improvements. Uh, we, we really want to integrate with Triliscope, use new Angular or React stuff. Really promising and really cool thing that many people have been asking, WebGL backend. Um, I'm really happy to say that, well, actually I wanted to show uh, an example here. Uh, we, uh, Almer, have been working that, uh, on that for the last months. We have now a branch where actually it's working um, and it's really, it's really promising. It's incredibly uh, performant. Uh, we have an example of uh, plotting uh, 10K points on, on, on the Canva, on, uh, on WebGL, uh, but it, it probably can increase uh, to, to a lot. Um, uh, and it, 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 it perf I, I tried to increase to, to 100,000. It performed quite well, so uh, we are getting there. We really, would, really, really would like to reach a 1.1 version by the end of the year, uh, which means that uh, this is going to be a, a an awesome year. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, I want to show this one. Um, it's a, uh, really quick. Um, we, have, we are working on new ways to work with Bokeh. One of this is a very experimental branch, not nothing really official of the moment, but it lets you uh, sort of use this Bokeh develop command that tells um, tells Bokeh server to track a file that we are working on and while you type and you change your stuff with your one own editor, I don't know, 
I would I would not name any editor because then I will get inside of Flameworks. So as you can see here, it's been uh, it's updating. Uh, this is a, a normal plot uh, bokeh code as it updates on the right side of the editor, it changes on, on the left side. It, it reloads the plot and uh, change everything. This is a really cool thing for people that want to prototype because usually the, the, um, the main uh, flow that I, I see is like using uh, IPython notebooks, but in, if you have two views and you can see actually things get interacting while you type in your, your editor, is a pretty cool feature. Cool. Um, well, as I said, we are working on, maybe I didn't say that any, uh, as, as I wanted, uh, we are working on uh, changing a little bit the bokeh server or redimensioning re re it. Um, it's really, really, really cool piece of, of functionality, but um, it, it probably, um, we would like to separate things a, bit, a little bit more, so keep the bokeh server a little bit uh, cleaner, smaller, and simplify it a little bit, and add, um, let's say, add functionality that you can plug in and on top of Bokeh server. Um, cool. I wanted to show a WebGL demo live, but I didn't. Same app, so touring. So, I really would like to invite everyone that is, is wants to use or try Bokeh to install, for, uh, try it, provide feedback. Um, if you want to come talk to me later, come talk to us on the mailing list on social media. Um, we would like to hear about your needs, try to help you and to build uh, custom apps, apps, dashboards, or integrate new function functionality to, to Bokeh. It's uh, an open source project and we really invite people to help. And that's all. Thank you. I hope it was useful. Okay. Uh, I have heard a lot of about Ajax, but uh, do you support WebSockets in a way to push uh, data from the server directly? Uh, so you're asking if Bokeh provides uh, ways to push data from the service uh, from a server. Um, yes, you can. Well, um, Bokeh Bokeh server implements uh, is implemented on WebSockets, so. You, you can you can push data uh, directly. Um, if using Ajax data source, you can only uh, send request, Ajax requests to your server, so it's not the same as using WebSockets. So, but you can you know you can pull on whatever frequency you want. So if you expose your server service, you can do that. The um, one problem could be. Um, updating all the source because you don't want to transfer big, big chunks of data every time. Um, you can, right now at the moment, you can use a trick for that. Um, instead of using an Ajax data source, you can use a normal source. Uh, it, it's basically, on the JavaScript side, it's basically just a bag of data. So if you have a callback, um, and your callback just say, call your ser service that just returns the last chunk of data, you can just take that and push to your uh, JavaScript uh, arrays, and it works well. It's not the same, but it, it's a uh, uh, possible solution. Hi. Hi. Uh, I have two questions. One is you said there were new charts, so interested what kind of charts those are coming. Mm -hmm. And the second one is about the tech, TED talk. I remember seeing it and how that was done. Okay. Uh, and I, w I was wondering how that changed how you work for the, the talk, how, how it influenced you. Okay. Um, so the first question was, um, I already forgot the first question. <laughs> Charts, new charts. Uh, okay, so um, charts is an interesting uh, API uh, because we want it to be very high level and at the same time we want to give all the flexibility we have on the, on the lower level chart uh, plot interfaces. 
So uh, we had a lot of discussions on this and we are being, we have studied also the main user requests uh, and user needs are usually linked to data grouping, data facing, data aggregation and all those. So we want to, I'm not saying we want to go in the same path as a ggplot or seaborn. I don't know if you are aware of those, but we want, Bokeh itself is, is very influenced by the grammar of graphics. I don't know if you um, know about this, but um, we want to follow this path somehow and let user tell. For instance, um, I want to build a new scatter plot and I want those um, from this data set it's, it's not normalized, so you need to group it, and you need to do this, 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 and we want to add a new way to spell this. Um, as, as regarding new charts, uh, we right now have, I think, 10 uh, new, new t 10 charts already, or 12. Um, one that is there for uh, ages is, is waiting for the new work, is bubble charts, uh, but we are really open on, on new, new type of charts we want to build, like, uh, I don't know, violin plot or uh, a lot of new fancy. We actually um, took in consideration a lot of fancy charts. Um, the other question was regarding a tech talk. Um, I would defer that to Sarah, who's here, uh, luckily, and she did the, the, um, the, 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 the example itself, so I think she's a better source for that. Come to the Continuum booth later and we can talk. Thank you. More questions? Yep. It was mentioned before, but uh, how about supporting maps? I have seen some examples with maps. Uh, are you going on that? Yeah, so um, we already have support for um, Google Maps. Um, I will show you in a minute while I talk. And we also support um, building um, patches from Ma uh, files to generate maps. Uh, um, so we have a fairly support. Geo, um, special things uh, are th an area that we want to work a lot. Um, so in it, for, for charts, for instance, it's not really, really well supported, but it, it, it has some examples that you can already use. So for instance, if I run Python, Examples, clear maps should work. If if Wi Fi is working. No, if you want if we have other questions in the meanwhile, Wi Fi is a little bit slow. Oh here you go. So basically this is a plot uploading um, Google Maps uh, on, in a scatter plot on top of that map. Okay, and you can you have some actually some interactivity, for example, that you can you can zoom in, zoom out. Here you go. Um, actually, are, I've, got, I've got one question. We are over on time, I think. So. Oh, we are not. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming and come talk to me.